I'd like to tell you a little story uh, from the life of Billy Bray. Billy Bray was born in a little village called Twelve Heads in Cornwall in the south of England. He was born June 1st, 1794. And uh, Billy Bray was raised in a God-fearing home, uh, but at the age of 17, he left home to go to the town of Truro to work. He was a, uh, worked in a tin mine, and he got in with some drinkers, and he became a terrible drunkard. And uh, he mistreated his wife and his children and uh, really was a wicked, wicked man. He said he was the worst of the lot. And uh, on one occasion, uh, he had been sent to buy some coal, and he did buy the coal, but then he stopped in and got drunk. And his wife had to come, and she had to haul the coal home. And he was so humiliated that uh, his wife had to do this work through the village. Everyone saw uh, what a, a sad uh, case for a man he was, that um, he, he got a hold of... Uh, uh, John Bunyan's book, Visions of Heaven and Hell, and he read it, and it really shook him up. Now, his wife, uh, she was a, uh, a backslidden believer, and um, she had been so distressed by uh, the way he treated her that she had secretly turned to the Lord and begun to pray for Billy. Well, he woke up one morning at 3 a.m., and he couldn't sleep, and he was in agony of soul, and he determined that on the Sunday he would go to hear uh, the gospel preached. And there were uh, people at, in that time, I think they'd broken away from the Methodist church, and they simply called themselves Bible Christians. But on this particular day, it was pouring down rain, and no one showed up, and he arrived alone. And he was very discouraged, but he went back, and uh, he spent all day Sunday uh, reading the Bible and uh, praying and crying out to God for mercy. And he really didn't know how to get saved, but he, he longed to be uh, delivered. And uh, he said, I was the worst of the lot. I was the wildest, the most daring and reckless of all the reckless, daring men. He was just a little fellow, but he was just uh, full of spunk. And, uh, and the devil had him where he wanted him. Well, he went to work on the Monday and, and basically spent the day laboring in the mine and crying out to God for mercy. And uh, after several days of this, he couldn't eat, he couldn't sleep, and finally he writes, um, uh, he, he, he cried out to the Lord, and this is what he said, You have said, They that ask shall receive. They that seek shall find, and to them that knock the door shall be opened. And I have faith to believe it. He said in an instant, The Lord made me so happy that I cannot express what I felt. I shouted for joy. I praised God with my whole heart for what he had done for a poor sinner like me. For I could say, The Lord has pardoned all my sins. That was in November of 1823. And almost immediately he began to preach, to preach to the men down the mines. And he saw quite a few of them saved. And they say that if there was one section of scripture that described the life of Billy Bray, it would be the three little staccato statements in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses uh, 16 and 17 and 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. Why, well, he said when he walked down the street, it just sounded to him uh, in his head like when he put one foot down, it sounded like praise the Lord, and the other foot sounded like hallelujah. He would get so happy, he would dance. And he, would, and he would call everyone else to rejoice in the Lord. And uh, I want to read just a few lines from this little book uh, put out by F.W. Bourne. There were uh, 14 editions of this book were published. I think it was first published in 
1877 or something like that. Um, and uh, it's it's a lovely little book uh, on the life of Billy Bray. But uh, when he got saved and he went and told his, his uh, friends, he said, um, I was like a man in a new world. He said, I remember that everything looked new to me. The people, the fields, the cattle, the trees. He said, I spent the greater part of my time in praising the Lord. I could say with Isaiah, O Lord, I will praise thee, for thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. He said, "Uh, I told all that I met what the Lord had done for my soul. I've heard some say that they have had hard work to get away from their companions, but I sought mine out and had hard work to find them soon enough to tell them what the Lord had done for me. Some said I was mad, and others that I should uh, get back uh, again next payday, in other words, back to drinking. But he said, praise the Lord, it's now more than 40 years, and they haven't got me yet. They said I was a madman, but they meant I was a glad man. And glory be to God, I've been glad ever since. Well, Billy Bray discovered that there were many of these little villages that had no place to preach. And so in faith in the Lord, he began to ask around and say, if anyone had a little piece of ground. And then he would find bits and pieces of this and that. There was a, a mine closing and someone gave him a few a few shillings, and he went down and bought some of the lumber from the closed mine, and he'd bring it back, and he built all these little chapels. And I was privileged some years ago to travel through Cornwall and actually go into some of these little chapels that he, with the help of others, had built all across the region there in Cornwall. And he would go from place to place preaching the gospel in these little buildings. And uh, he wouldn't put a chimney in them. Because he said, you know, people told him you should really build it so that if the chapel doesn't work out, you can always sell it as a cottage. And he said, no, I. the only reason I'd build a chimney would be to chase the devil out of it. <laughs> but he, 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 he wouldn't. So they were just very plain buildings, and they would be packed to the doors when Billy Bray came to preach the gospel. Well, in any case, the first little chapel he built, which was actually on a piece of property his mother gave him, he wanted a pulpit for it. And um, he, uh, it, it, let me just read this little bit here. Uh, this was at uh, the, little, the little chapel called the Great Deliverance Chapel at Curly Downs. And, and he, he wanted to get a pulpit and uh, he went past a, 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 an auction sale, and he saw a little three-cornered cupboard. And he said, the very thing, the very thing. I can cut a slit down the back of it and strengthen the middle of it and put a board up in the front of it and clap a pair of steers behind it, whatever that means, and then the preacher can preach out of it pretty. <laughs> and so he, he decided that he'd like to buy that. Well, he didn't know anything about auctions. And so um, he he was telling someone that, that uh, he'd love to do this, and uh, but he didn't have any money. And the man said, well, you're Billy Bray, aren't you? Well, here, I'll give you the six shillings to buy it. And so he gave him the six shillings. So he went to the auction. And um, the, the auctioneer had hardly mentioned this little three-cornered cupboard. And Billy Bray put up his hands and he said, I'll buy it for six shillings. And, uh, well, that's not the way an auction works. Almost immediately, a man behind him said, uh, seven shillings. And Billy Bray cried, no, tis only six. There's the money. Everybody laughed. The hammer came down and the man behind him got it for seven shillings. Well, he said, Father, do no best. (laughs) And uh, although he was a bit disappointed, he said, but anyhow, I must give the man back his six shillings. But when he went back, the man was gone, and he didn't know what to do with the six shillings. Well, then he noticed uh, that the man who had bought this three-cornered cabinet had it on a cart and uh, with a horse, 
and he was drawing it up to the village where he lived. And so he decided to follow it. And he says, I'll, I'll see what, what happened. So he, he, he followed it to the house, and he said they carried it to a house and tried to take it inside. But it was just too big to get in. They twisted and turned. They pulled and pushed, but it was no use. Here's a mess, said the purchaser angrily. I've given seven shillings for it, and I'm going to have to cut it up into firewood. Then, as his eyes twinkled, Billy stepped over and put his hand on the man's shoulder as he stood, wiping his forehead. I'll give you six shillings for it if you'll carry it down to my little chapel. <laughs> that I will, said the man, pleased as being well served. Bless the Lord, cried Billy. It's just like him. He knew I couldn't carry it myself, so he got this man to carry it for me. <laughs> that was a wonderful thing to read about uh, people like this, happy in the Lord Jesus. Uh, so, uh, you know, he says, it's not that I don't go through hard times. The way he described it, he says, the devil knows where I live. And so Billy Bray, he faced temptations and all the rest. But this overriding joy, the joy of the Lord, is our strength. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. What a great combination to change the outlook of our hearts, to blow away the gray clouds, even in hard times, to realize God is good. He has been so good to rescue us from the pit of hell that we deserved. And, and so be encouraged, Christian. Look up. Remember, God is good. Uh, one foot going down and saying, praise the Lord, and the other foot going down, say hallelujah. And may the Lord help us to tramp on home to glory through this dark world and bring light from heaven, joy from heaven into this world because God has been so good to us. Thank you.